All right, good evening everyone. Dr. Randall Gates, board certified chiropractic neurologist, also a chiropractic physician at Gates Brain Health. Tonight we're starting a new series on POTS, referred to as postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, <clears throat> which basically means individuals who stand up or sit up and their heart rate goes much higher. Typically a 30 point elevation in heart rate or over 120 beats per minute after 10 minutes of standing or the head up tilt table test. So POTS, uh, let me give you a little background on POTS. Basically I've worked with patients who have chronic illness for 10 years, chronic pain, chronic fatigue, particularly were the largest demographic that I was seeing. In that time, I had to become versed with not only the nuances of the underlying causes of a condition like fibromyalgia, but all the other comorbidities like anxiety, depression, fatigue that is so commonly seen in patients who have chronic pain. Now, the other issue is that individuals with, let's say, a condition like fibromyalgia, oftentimes there's a stigma behind it because they look normal, their lab tests are normal, their brain and spine imaging is normal. So how can this individual who's quote unquote normal be in such horrific pain or be so fatigued? And so, uh, as I've mentioned in other videos, uh, there's a quotation from my favorite rheumatology book where they say, you know, few conditions evoke such ire as fibromyalgia in the back rooms of, you know, the medical, <clears throat> the medical circles. So, and good evening to everybody who's joining. And so and let me switch out here to the presentation. I should probably have that up. So anyways, so yeah, so working with all these fibromyalgia patients and they're fatigued and trying to figure out why they're fatigued and having pain. And then the issue of POTS became more and more acknowledged which is where these individuals who had fatigue also had really high elevations of heart rate, particularly when standing. And if you're a POTS sufferer, because now POTS has so much more notoriety and the Mayo Clinic deserves a lot of attention for that, University of Alabama, Emory University down in Georgia, they're doing a lot of work on POTS. But now the information about POTS is getting out there and dysautonomia. 10 years ago, hardly anybody was talking about dysautonomia whereas now more and more doctors are, are aware of it. But still, there's a lot of frustration within the dysautonomia world regarding kind of so-so management, so to speak, of these cases. And so hopefully in this whole presentation series on POTS, I'm going to go probably do five to eight videos at least on this topic. Um, not only you will have a better understanding, but maybe you can talk about this with your doctor and have a better understanding of treatment strategies to work from. Okay, so in terms of what causes POTS, what causes someone to stand up and all of a sudden their blood volume goes to their lower extremities and their heart rate goes up? The general consensus is that there is a burst of adrenaline and adrenaline stays high in patients who have POTS. Many of you know that if you had a lot of adrenaline, like after you saw a car drive into a restaurant and you were sitting there on the sidewalk and this happened right in front of you, your heart's going to beat faster. You're going to feel kind of jittery. You're going to feel tremulousness. You're going to have some anxiety. It's going to take you a while to calm down. Well, that same adrenaline phenomena is happening in POTS patients all the time. And the newest information is showing that the vast majority of POTS patients seem to have an autoimmune problem where their immune system is attacking one or more of the many relays involved from when the brain and the vestibular system talk together with the, what's here is your carotid sinus, the baroreceptors, when these mechanisms are talking down through the spinal cord to what's called your sympathetic nervous system to get blood back up to the brain. There's some autoimmune insult to somewhere in that relay loop. That's basically the consensus. And I'll do one or more videos on that because that's a pretty significant topic. So now the POS patient has a bunch of blood in their legs, they're standing up, they're moving around and they start to have a lot of adrenaline be secreted because their body is trying to have more adrenaline so their heart beats faster, harder to get blood up to their brain. And as a consequence, the POTS patient presents typically with symptoms of anxiety, fatigue, dizziness, brain fog, 
Lots of times there's overlap with gastrointestinal problems. There can be overlap with you having what would most people would consider a lot of allergies or mast cell reactions. And it can present with neuropathy, where you have numbness and tingling and or, burn, and or burning down in your lower extremities. So that's basically POTS. And are there other features to it? Yeah. Is it associated with Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome? Yeah. Probably need to do a video on that. So I'm not... I'm not uh, belittling those topics at all. It's just know that I get a lot of comments, you know, saying you didn't talk about this, you didn't talk about that. So I appreciate those comments, but it's hard to bring it all together all the time, so so to speak. But nonetheless, that's POTS. So then the other element of POTS is that most of you, to the outward observer, as I mentioned with the fibromyalgia patient, you look normal, your blood tests are normal by and large. And typically, POTS affects younger demographics of females. And so what is this younger, healthy appearing female doing in a cardiologist's office? And I, in my opinion, I believe that is what a lot of doctors have commonly thought. Now that POTS is better recognized, more doctors are aware of it. But I mean, I've talked to patients who said, you know, my cardiologist didn't even know what POTS was. Um, and so nothing against those cardiologists. Their job is to save people's lives. They're dealing with, you know, individuals who have many clogged arteries, a life and death situations. So when they see somebody healthy appearing, they may be scratching their head saying, what are you doing here? So because of that, now there's the tendency to label that individual as having anxiety. And so that's kind of where we're starting with POTS, because then lots of times the doctor is going to say, if they're not aware of POTS, they're going to say, okay, well, your heart rate's elevated. You know, we see that with anxiety, or we'll call it supraventricular tachycardia, SVT. And so that's what's going on. You have anxiety. And most of you know there's more going on than just anxiety, so that's the purpose of this presentation. So this article is from Autonomic Neuroscience. Um, I can't remember the accepted. Yeah, I think this was published around 2017. Uh, Autonomic Neuroscience Journal is fantastic in their exploration of all facets of POTS. And I'm starting with this article just because I want to read you some of the highlighted areas. So here they say autonomic symptoms are commonly experienced by patients with psychiatric diseases or diagnoses. So they may be comparable to POTS, and they can include sweating, faintness, and palpitations. So if you've ever known someone with panic attacks, for example, they're going to have sweating, they're going to feel faint, and they're going to have heart palpitations, which are overlapping symptoms with POTS. Anytime there's overlapping symptoms without a really easy diagnostic test like a blood test or an MRI, the condition's going to come under a lot of scrutiny. <clears throat> and they say, conversely, Comorbid, typically subclinical psychological symptoms are common in patients with POTS. VVS refers to vasovagal syncope and EH basically refers to uh, hyperhidrosis, a type of hyperhidrosis where people sweat a lot in their hands. So we have this overlap. So basically autonomic symptoms are common in anxiety disorders. And then those of you who have you know, POTS or vasovagal syncope or hyperhidrosis commonly have psychological features. And they said that many patients with POTS express maladaptive cognitive errors, including catastrophizing, which can add to the functional disability and reinforces anxiety and somatic hypervigilance. That's a pretty interesting statement. And so they're saying those of you with POTS, because you don't know what's going on in your body and you're having these maladaptive cognitive errors, it freaks you out. And because it freaks you out, then you're going to be labeled by a psychologist or a psychiatrist as catastrophizing. You're making the issue possibly bigger than it is. So that's how doctors are going to look at you. And they said that can add to the functional disability because now you're freaked out. Your doctors don't really know what's going on with you. You're catastrophizing. You're even more worried. And then maybe that adds to the fact that now you're afraid to do anything. You're afraid to get out of bed. You're afraid to go to the store. And because you have somatic hypervigilance, you're worried about what your heart's going to do if you're going to have heart palpitations, so on and so forth. So I think I'm hoping that a lot of you who have POTS or even somewhere on the anxiety disorder spectrum that you can uh, appreciate kind of the differentiation here between these different things. And they said... They concluded effective symptoms in patients with POTS 
VVS and hyperhidrosis appear to be driven by interoception of somatic symptoms and sensations rather than trauma or neurosis. Another big statement. So what is interoception? Interoception refers to our body's recognition of internal sensations. So you have a part of your brain, which I don't, I'm not able to show you well here, but it's deep down basically in underneath the parietal lobe and the temporal lobe. It's deep in there. It's an inner lobe of the brain. It's called the insula or the insular cortex. And the insula takes in a lot of our bodily information regarding what your heart rate's doing, what's happening with your digestion, what's happening with your vestibular system. This is why a lot of patients with inner ear disorders develop anxiety because there's a mismatch of signals coming into the insula and that mismatch creates anxiety. Mismatches are bad in the world of neurology. I've talked about mismatches in the anterior cingulate gyrus right through here. And that area is like, let me say it this way, it has a frame of reference for your life. So if you're, you have expectations of what my life should look like or what my day should be, and then the reality doesn't match your expectations, that creates a lot of anguish. And that's actually a source for dysphoria or can lead to depression in some people. So this mismatch of interoception, interoception, if my explanation didn't help, look it up. But that's an important term for all of you to understand, because if you have POTS and your blood's down in your legs and your heart's beating way faster than it should be when you're up and moving around and you're dizzy and you have brain fog, all those weird signals are coming into your brain and your brain doesn't know what to do with it. And they said here, introception being anxiogenic rather than homeostatic in these groups. So the abnormal bodily sensations create anxiety which is a really important statement because lots of times you may identify, yeah, I have anxiety, but that's not the cause of my symptoms. Like a lot of doctors want to identify it as, but the anxiety is more the result. So the old chicken versus the egg argument, it appears the anxiety is more a result of the abnormal introception. Going on, recent MRI studies in orthostatic intolerance suggest that these introceptive interoceptive deficits may at least in part be mediated by structural differences within the insula. And I'm going to show you an image here coming up of that study. So basically the insula of POTS patients and other emotional processing areas are different than people without POTS. Different in density, different in function we're finding. So that's important. And so introceptive in inference of large prediction errors of excessive autonomic activity, blah, blah, blah. So they keep going. So basically, this introception is abnormal. The insula becomes dysregulated. It actually becomes smaller, if I remember correctly. And that helps explain anxiety in POTS patients. And this is a study, this was from 2015 on structural brain abnormalities and postural tachycardia syndrome, VVM refers to voxel-based morphometry. You don't need to know that. Just basically, we're looking at the density of your brain, density of every different area. So here they're looking at the density of all these different areas of the brain, and they basically found the cingulate cortex was affected, the insular cortex was affected, and I believe one other frontal area, which they're diagramming up here, was affected. <clears throat> and they basically said, Comparison of gray matter volume revealed diminished gray matter volume within the left anterior insula, right middle frontal gyrus, and right cingulate gyrus in the POTS group. Together, these findings of structural differences, particularly within the insular and cingulate components of the salience network, suggest a link between dysregulated physiological functions arising from compromised central autonomic control and increased vulnerability to psychiatric symptoms in POTS patients. So that should be validating in and of itself, just those two articles. Uh, here I attach some newer work. This is 2018, and they're basically saying pathological autonomic overexcitation predisposes to anxiogenic traits and POTS and vasovagal syncope. Um, and basically they're saying the same thing here that I've already said. And that psychological symptoms in this population may be a response to the physical symptoms experienced by people with POTS. So basically your psychological symptoms seem to be secondary largely 
to the introception being abnormal. Now, in this study, they did also highlight <clears throat> there are, you know, there's not always a consensus. In this study, they had a larger sample size, and they basically found that POTS patients did have higher uh, anxiety responses in certain circumstances than they expected. But overall, the consensus is the anxiety seems to be a result rather than a cause of, a lot of anxiety in POTS, if that makes sense. So what does this mean to you? It means that you're not crazy. Most of you are not crazy for the most part. You have something physiologically wrong with you. If you inject adrenaline into anyone, they're going to have traits of anxiety. Uh, look up a pheochromocytoma in those symptoms. That's an adrenal tumor where too much adrenaline is produced, and those patients lots of times are misdiagnosed for a long period of time, diagnosed with anxiety or hypertension, when it actually they have a tumor in their adrenal gland secreting excessive adrenaline. Think of a methamphetamine addict who's, you know, working in their yard until three in the morning and welding and things like that, and they have tons of energy and they're very anxious and they're skittish and their hands are shaking. Those are results of basically high adrenergic function or adrenaline, and POTS is a disorder of adrenaline. And we're gonna go into the autoimmune component of that in coming videos. So send me your questions. Uh, I'll escape out of this. I'll go back into Facebook. Yeah, send me your questions, and hello to everybody who joined, and oh, that's so sweet. Thank you for the really kind comment, Brianna. I appreciate that, and yes, I am doing well, so wonderful, wonderful. I love it. So yeah, I'll post this to YouTube, and again, send me any questions you have any topics within the realm of POTS you want me to talk about, and then we'll go from there. All right, everyone, have a great night.